Today, we are back at Toto's Antiques, located just outside of Oaklockney, Georgia, Route 19, just outside of Thomasville. If you're in the market for a unique piece with history and you're down this way, be sure to stop in and check them out. And tell them Jay from What It's Like YouTube Car Channel sent you there. That's me. I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that are off the beaten path. If that sounds like a channel that you'd be interested in watching, hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell icon to never miss a video. Also, this is our 92nd episode so far. In the comment section below, what is your favorite episode that you've watched so far? I'm, I'm interested to see which episodes you guys like the most. And um, what other cars would you like to see? Do you guys like 50s cars, 40s cars, 30s cars, 60s cars, 70s cars, 80 cars? Put it in the comment section below. All right. Today, we are going to dive deep or take a closer look at the 1922 Citroen, which went by lots of different names, Type C, 5HP, or 5CV. But before we do, a little bit of background on Citroen. Citroen was a French car manufacturer founded in March of 1919, founded by Andre Cintro. The founder, Andre Cintro, he was born the 5th of February, 1878, and he died the 3rd of July, 1935, of stomach cancer at the age of 57. Cintro was founded in 1919, but by 1930 was the fourth largest auto manufacturer in the world. Let's talk Citroen Type C. This small car goes by a lot of different names, as we mentioned in the beginning. Type C, 5HP, 5CV. In France, it's known as the 7.5 HP. This was Andre's second car to market. The 10 HP Type A was the first in 1919. The Type C, 5HP, was built between 1922 through 1926 with between 81,000 and 83,000 units produced. Designed by Edmund Moyet. I'm not French. I apologize if I butchered that name. It was a two-seat boat-tailed car. Later, there was a three-seat version offered. The first color on offer was a pale grapefruit yellow, which gave it the nickname Petite Citron or Little Lemon. This car was advertised to be a car for females because it used an electric starter instead of the hand crank. One could use the hand crank on the front if you wanted to do it that way. Let's talk specs. Rides a wheelbase of 88.6 inches long. Total length is 126 inches long. 55.1 inches wide. It weighs 1,197 pounds. Price when it was new was 8,500 francs. Okay, moving on to engine. It was a 52.2 cubic inch displacement, 856 cc's, made 11 brake horsepower. Bore was 2.2 inches, stroke was 3.5 inches, top speed was 37 miles per hour, was cooled by thermosiphon, was fed through a single Solex carburetor. The gearbox consisted of a, it was a three speed forward gearbox with one reverse gear. It was unsynchro meshed, but the owner was telling me that the ladies actually like this car because the clutch is really light and it's really easy to shift gears in this car. Even though it's not a synchro mesh, the way a lot of these older transmissions work, they'll have first and second as gears and then third gear would be direct drive or whatever the final ratio is in the rear end. So there was somewhere between 81,000 and 83,000 of these produced during its lifetime between 1922 and 1926. A lot of them have been converted into tractors and utility vehicles. Some sources say that they estimate it to be about 4% are left or about 3,000 cars survive. Don't mind my swim trunks, I'm on vacation. But I just wanted to show what this is like here the steering wheel position it's like a lot of things people don't show which you know don't really have to worry about headroom too much because this is a convertible but i love the uh i love the over the hood view and where you could turn these and then tilt the windshield out and then have air conditioning in your face like you're driving a motorcycle with a steering wheel so i don't know if i could drive this car my legs hitting the bottom of the steering wheel even if I could. 
gonna walk through this dashboard real quick. This controls the, this monitors the oil pressure. This is the speedometer with the odometer inside of it. Notice it goes backwards. Right next to it, this is for the ignition. Right next to it, this is for the lights. Turn signals, trafficators right here. This is a light to shine on the dashboard instrumentation. Over here is the amp gauge. This is this is would be the horn button. Over here, this is where the choke is. This is the clock with the winder. And the owner just showed me this right here. If you flip it up, this was the original owner. It uh, has a plaque um, with their name and everything on it, which is really cool. And it's Saint Chris. And Christopher will protect the uh, travelers. Protects the travelers. Yeah. All right, coming down to this pedal box, I apologize, it's really dark, but just check out the pedal placement. They're really small pedals, and the pedals aren't where you would think they would be. The gas pedal's in the center. Brake pedal doesn't apply brakes to the actual wheels, but it applies brake to the transmission, and the clutch is the clutch. Also worth mentioning, this vehicle does not have front brakes. It only has rear brakes, and it's they're applied by using the handbrake located right next to the shifter. The owner was showing me that this is how you would tell if you're out of gas. So when you get gas, you pull this up. The gas goes inside of this filler. And then as you're driving down the road, this gets lower and lower. As it gets lower, um, you'll find out that you need gas. and that's how you told yourself if you needed gas. Once it got down to the bottom there, it was out. So just check this out. This is the trunk area. This is the key if you wanted, if one wanted to lock it. And then inside the trunk, it doesn't have a very big opening, but it's a very big trunk. And then on top, it has these racks if one wanted to put a suitcase or a picnic basket or anything above the trunk and you could secure it with these straps here. And that just ties it down to the back so it doesn't fly. This is what it would look like with the picnic basket on, a, on the back. But just check this out. This is an actual picnic basket. It's equipped with forks, knives, spoons. Everything that you would need to have a good picnic with you and your significant other. I would strap this picnic basket to the car so it doesn't blow away as you're driving down the road. Yeah. Coming around here to the side, this side mount with a side mount mirror so you can see people behind you. Because this car doesn't have a rear view mirror. It's only got one side mount mirror here. And there's not another side mount on the other side because that's where the door is. So right before the side mount, there is this little box here and you open it like this. And notice how it's built. It's built right into the fender here and it's a toolbox that's really kind of cool just check out how small that engine is here i'm going to put my hand in the foreground just for reference but just look at how all of this stuff comes together and works and the carburetor's down here low there's the other horn we were talking about Notice all the electrical stuff, and I love how the firewalls, all this engine turned, nickel plated. Here's a... Oh, look how small the radiator is. And the fan. <laughs> the fan's super small. Everything's super small in this car. Coming to the other side, notice the steering coming down here into the steering box. This, I was told, was the starter motor. The starter motor is almost as big as the motor itself. And look at all the ignition, how that all works. On to the pros and cons. These pros and cons are not coming from the complete book of collectible cars. Blue chip auto investment, 30 gears from 1930 to 2000 by Richard M. Langworth. But are pros and cons that I ha have come up with. On the pros side, has that early European look electric starter decent trunk space for the size of the car and it's super frugal i'm not entirely sure how many miles per gallon it gets i wasn't able to find that figure but i saw in other people's notes that it was extremely frugal the cons it's small tiny pedal box top speed is 37 miles per hour they are kind of expensive to buy 
I checked Mecham before doing this episode, and I saw these are selling for between 30,000 and 40,000. So if it goes 37 miles per hour, that's almost like $1,000 per mile per hour. Okay, before we go, name that tune. The first person to name the song as well as the band or artist correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please give us a like so more people can see this video in the future. And as always, until next time, toodaloo!